a bit windy today. We're having trouble finding a calm yard to work because the wind's gusting. It must be 60 or 70 or whatever. And coming straight from the south, blowing up nice warm air. Just all my yards are exposed to the south. Typically we get the north northwest cold winds down on us, so we're not I'm not really set up to protect the yards from the south wind. Typically we like southern exposure to just you know welcome that sun into the yards. So we've kind of picked and choose the yards as we're working today to try to manage the wind a little bit. Because we must forge ahead and we must keep working. We cannot stop and let up. We have to move ahead. Today we are going through the apiary and taking our split. Today is the first day of shaking these bees down to be able to pull all this surplus, all this growth, all this excitement from these colonies before they decide to cast off into the trees and bugger off on me. I'll just kind of walk through what I'm doing. We have a lot of colonies just about to tip the balance on us all at the same time so we're kind of taking a step ahead. Maybe we're anticipating the work by three days or so. We have cells that will mature on Monday. So we're today's Tuesday. So we're going to spend the next couple days shaking bees down and skimming that strength into splits maybe through the rain. And that comes hopefully Thursday, Friday. Knock on wood. Be such a treat to be able to pull splits in the rain. We will not complain, we'll just put on raincoats if that happens and get everything set down into their yards for uh, they'll sit Saturday, Sunday, Monday they'll get the cells so they'll have to be a little bit patient and this way we can proceed with our work, get things done and not get caught off guard by swarms. Let me just go through a few here with you to show you exactly what I'm doing and exactly how I'm managing this huge amount of work that's just upon us. So here's a typical arrangement we gotta spend our attention towards. Here's a blue tag colony that was a box of bees at the beginning of the month and we promoted it with a second box of space to build to allow that queen to develop a nice great big brood nest. And right now that nest is maturing. She's laid two, three frames of brood up top here exactly what we want. We've got to be able to take this off before they emerge because it's much easier to be able to take it off when it's balanced like this. We don't have to do as much frame counting. I, I know that if she has three to four frames of brood up here then I know that she's back down here laying three to four frames of brood. So there's going to be a little bit of assumption going on here, a little bit of guesswork. It's all subjective. But if I can see two, three, four frames of brood, I might even send the fourth down. But I can just take them away as a split. So what we have to do is make sure the queen's in the bottom box so we can simply just take this top box away without any efforts by using a queen excluder. The beekeeper's most useful tool is a queen excluder if you know how to use it. So I'll show you what we're doing there and on this side this was a hive that was not big enough to get promotion on top but big enough now that it needs to be skimmed down because if we don't, it's simply going to cast a swarm off on us. So instead of going through and finding the queen and pulling the brood with bees to make up splits, what we're doing is we've put a box, a honey box up on top here as our second with the queen excluder. And that had just bought us a little bit of time over this last week because this bottom box is on the verge of running out of space and could possibly swarm. So we put a honey box, a second up on top here. Just give a place for the bees to go, pull them off the bottoms of the frames where they're doing all their fancy work with brood comb and queen cells. So we give them space up here to pull them off the bottoms. And now what we're doing is we're assessing the strength and whether or not they need one or two brood frames pulled from this colony. So it's just a quick little assessment. Okay, this one's pretty strong and needs two brood frames taken or it's, you know, whatever. We'll take one brood frame. We simply do is we just simply take the brood frame, shake the bees off, bring it up to the top above the excluder, and then we'll come back through and take those one or two brood frames into a, a nuke to take as a split. So let us work ourselves through a couple examples here. First, we're going to go through this big colony, take a full split. And 
and they are looking real nice. They're just starting to work on the foundation here. There's going to be a nice little slab of brood inside there that we can take as surplus. And the drone comb they're building, every time you break open drone comb, no mites, no mites, no mites, no mites. So nice. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to quickly assess down here to make sure there's enough brood to build. I want four frames of brood down in the bottom. So I'm just do a quick assessment down there. Don't put too much time into this. The brood nest starts here. It ends over here. So they're a little shy on brood. There's a few partial frames there. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that I drop a brood frame down to the bottom here. a real nice slab of brood. So I'm just trying to balance out the colony. So that is now has provided the bottom with three to four frames of capped brood. Now what I want to do is take all this, shake the bees down to the bottom. I do very little inspection for the queen. I'll maybe glance at the frame while I'm transferring the equipment. Just to, if I find her, that's great. Then I can put her down. We don't do any shaking. But I'm just going through counting the brood frames. So I'm looking for between two and three frames of brood, maybe four if we have lots of strength in the yard, and transfer everything, shake it down, transfer it into that box. It's a real nice food frame. open larvae on this one. Real nice brood frame. Two beautiful brood frames. And another one, kind of a little bit of everything, kind of called scraps. As food, open brood, cat brood, pollen. Nectar. Okay, now I know the queen is down there. Put on 
this queen excluder. I'll put this box back on top. It has two to three frames of cat brood, lots of food, and some space. There, I'll come back in the next, uh, yeah, I could come back this evening and simply put, just take that box off as a split, or we're gonna come back maybe in two days and take it off as a split. Easy breezy. This next colony is just a skim, a skim into a nuke. We've already come around and provided it space up on top. So now the first thing we do is just do a quick assessment on the girth of this colony. I'm looking down the top, I'm seeing a bunch of bees pretty much filling bees on practically all nine frames. So it's telling me that there's a lot of bees that were moving up. I'm gonna do a quick look underneath. And I'm seeing bees in the bottom. I'm not seeing a terrible amount of bees in the bottom, so they're not too congested. Like we're looking at nine frames of bees down here. I'm counting nine frames anywhere there's bees in between the seams, right? So there's bees in between the seams and all these frames right out to the side. So this colony definitely needs to be slimmed down, but the question is how much? Can't take too much, otherwise we'll take the production. Can't take too little, otherwise it'll swarm off. We can't spend too much time because we have a lot of colonies ahead of us. So with my assessment, I'm looking at lots of bees up top. I'm looking at a lot of bees in the bottom. Just quickly counted the brood frames from underneath there and I was looking at least at five to six frames. One, two, three, four, five, six had brood on it. So we'll go down and we'll find one real good one. Brood frame start here. So this is more so open brood. Here's some cat brood. Here's a good frame of brood and bees. There's a There's a real nice frame of brood we can take. We're going to take one frame of brood. Just because the rest of the frames aren't all full. So my assessment is telling me this hive can spare one frame of brood. To skim them down. So now I'm looking into my honey box and because we don't have any uh, brood combs that we can drop down into there. I'm looking down into my honey box because we're gonna have to use some honey frames and I'm looking for my worst honey frame to send down in the brood box and I'm not seeing any bad honey frames. So it looks like I'm just pulling up a honey frame, sending it down for the bees to use. Make no effort to find the queen. She could be on here, probably not. I don't have time, so there you go. Nice frame of brood. Excluder. There, now we've just quickly skimmed one brood frame from this colony. We're gonna come back, take that brood frame, shake these bees into the nuke. Maybe we could grab another brood frame from one, of the, one other one of these colonies to make up a two brood frame nuke. And there you go, as quick as that. It does take a lot of time when there's two in the yard, when I'm not videoing all the time, but uh, it just goes through five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, and you just rock the yard.
The other thing we're doing is we're bringing the whole apiary together. When we take these off as splits, we're going to take these excluders off and allow that queen full reign over both boxes. <clears throat> so here's an example, two colonies that weren't promoted with a space through our last round. So it wasn't given a double brood or it wasn't given that other honey box just to be able to expand into because they weren't quite big enough. And they still quite aren't, but we're going to give them a second box to grow into as we bring the whole apiary together. So I'm looking at, you know, there's a box of these. Maybe I could have taken a split from them, but I'm not going to because my assessment told me before not. So what I'll do here is simply put, put a honey box on top. Got to go grab one. And they are ready for the flow. So that is basically how I'm sorting out this round of work. This is the first yard actually, these are the first hives that I've worked on and I'm just kind of talking to myself here in the video to kind of detail out the work ahead of us this next round just to try to figure out how to make this work. So it looks like that is the plan I'm going to be using to move forward and I'll bring Carrie in to help me with the split and the evening out and everything. And that's basically what we're doing. We're taking the full split, queen down, excluder in, taking this box of bees, it would be three to four frames of brood, away into the mating area to put a queen cell. So this is gonna be a full size intact colony. These ones here, we're just basically skimming. So the, this is a honey box up on top, put an excluder in, pull the brood frame up, and we'll just come back through, pull those brood frames into a nuke. <laughs> shake some bees so we can just bring those down a little bit and then these units here that didn't have any space up on top we are basically just giving them space to allow that queen to expand up there we have another month until the honey flow so we want to provide them with the space to be able to manage this swarming urge all the way through june yeah so as, as with these ones here we put the space on top when we take this full split away We'll put a honey box up on top with the excluder out also. And then when we take these brood frames out, this excluder goes out. So then there's space. And then by the time we're done working through the entire yard, once we skim out, take the split, skim this, the strength away, this whole yard should be the same strength, basically. Give and take a little bit here and there. And then we go through the following round to even them out. And hopefully we've managed the swarm urge and the impulse to leave and hopefully I've been able to just grab all that strength and keep it productive for me in my apiary. Okay, now we have 30 yards ahead of us. 